Welcome to the next video. Getting the camper ready. Just doing some odds and ends. You know, we gotta get stuff together here. Got it loaded on the truck. Got the truck situated. We got one U-joint to replace, uh, but the truck is pretty well situated. Now we gotta situate the camper. So there's things that we gotta change. One of the things being that we wanna try and get that mattress out of there and replace it. We gotta clean it up. Thing is filthy after walking in here with a bunch of wet shoes and everything like that. So, and it's all dusty from sanding the floor when we redid the floor. Get stuff organized, do a couple of things here and there. Uh, I got some magnet latches I wanna put so that when you open this cabinet, maybe this is the final touches video, I don't know. Well, we just took the mattress out came out a lot easier than it went in. All right. And then I guess we're gonna clean this. Yeah. I think we just have to vacuum. This is our plan. So we're gonna, we know we need like airflow under the mattress. So Jay found these deck pro tech. So we're gonna put these underneath whatever mattress we put up here so we get some airflow and we don't get some mold and moisture issues. They're like little egg cartons almost, but they're made of it's definitely plastic, so they're firm. But we're gonna put them all together with maybe some zip ties. And we're gonna lay them all on here. And then our mattress will go right on top of that. Oh, and look who joined us. I missed a couple spots caulking because it's got dirt in there. All right, wanna talk about what you're doing? Forrest gumping it. The shrimp gumbo deal. Once we put this matting down, it's kind of, you know, it's going to be a pain in the butt to get under here again, so I figured might as well give it a good mopping. Yeah, and some things will never get up because they're painted on, like these little kitten footprints. And there's the first little sheet of five of those little breather mats. So what do we, what do we got? Alright, well I have a strategy. There's like concave and convex little bumps. So this is the concave side. These are the convex ones. So I've been putting them down. So I'm just lining them up real close together. You know, they don't like mesh well. So then I take it, a little zip tie, and I feed it through. Like so you have to find the edge. Feed it through over here somewhere. And then wait for it to kind of come up on this side. Pull it through and then you know how to use a zip tie. Easy peasy. All right. I don't know. We'll see. There's one that's done. Here's putting them in a, in rows of five, and then I'm gonna connect the rows of five. So what are we? How is it going so far? I mean, I'm just putting these in here right now, and then I'm gonna twist tie them together. Whatever zip tie them. Back to cushion making. Got the uh, Texas Chainsaw Cushion Massacre. Yeah, so it's just a little bit too big, so we're gonna take off a couple more inches. About like that? Yeah, that's probably. We found that this knife in particular is good for foam cutting. These are the magnets to hold the door up. So I got some lipstick. I got this screwed into the door and then I have it perfectly lined up and like I said it's a magnet so you kind of whatever so then I'm going to put a little bit of lipstick right around where the hole is like that same here just like that and then gently go like this pretty pretty good though I can pretty much actually see the outline of the the unit there's the first one. Okay. It's a really thin paneling, so you can strip it super easy. So you just get it snug and that's it. So let's see if it works. Oh yeah. Nice. That's cool. Just some random updates here. Just got done going around the entire exterior and touching up the caulking or sealant on the exterior of the camper that is RV ProFlex. Um, there was little cracks here and there. Uh, it's you know it's been it's been a year since I caulked it. 
That rain cap was never caulked. I just had butyl tape back there, so I razor it off the oozed out butyl tape, caulked it with the RV Pro Flex. You know, that kind of stuff, touching up stuff. I added this magnet latch, and uh, then I caulked that so that that is uh, sealed. And very tedious, time consuming, but important work. I brushed the floor here, or the uh, door jam, you can see there's a gap right there and on the other side so if water fall, water runs into here when the door shut and it'll, and it can run into the camper or through these bolt holes which I don't have or through these holes which I don't have screws in yet so I'm gonna put um, screws in there caulk everything up and uh, make it work got the next thing this is the step just got some carpeting from extra from the house so let's see how it fits so this is the area that we're talking about, which is the step going up to the bunk. And the way I designed this is kind of weird. Well, it's not weird, it's just, it's a tight fit. So it's got to slide in there real perfect. That, the other thing is you got to be able to get to this, to this here. So it does drag a little bit, but I don't know. Definitely looks more finished. We are just working on all sorts of little projects here with the camper, just getting little things ready to go. So I got some stuff hanging here. I'll show you that we got painted. Here's the um, water heater door. So there's the water heater. Uh, obviously the door's off. So this is uh, got the hinges here ready to go. I did some sealing, better caulking inside here. This all gets covered. So this white sealant will not look as bad as it does unless you open it. But no one opens that. You're not gonna. You're not allowed. Uh, well, I'm just letting that dry so that I can put that back on. And then right here, if you remember, this door. Uh, this is a custom door for the um, rear compartment here, as you can see. And I had that scuffed in preparation for paint, and that has one coat of primer and two coats of the same paint that we used for the exterior of the camper the only difference is instead of spraying it i brushed all three coats on with that so it's a little bit thicker but that is drying and i got it propped up so that it wouldn't run broom got it now we got to revisit this old problem uh, that was going on from last year when i got the new valve here dump valve is leaking really bad it's leaking from the where the valve seats if you reference an older video i have a couple things going on here i have a new valterra this portion of it i forget if that's the hub or what, what or spigot or whatever but whatever it is this is the little short stubby piece that actually is designed for this valve to mate up to and then this portion which is Here's a new one, just for reference. This portion goes, you know, mates up, and then the valve, and that's this piece right here. So that's this, this is a replacement right here. So then the valve mates up to this. Well, when I put this valve in here, and there's just two seals on each side, when I put the seal on this old, this is original from the camper from the 70s, this is a different brand, and it's older, I don't know, but that seal wasn't snug. It, it, watch the other video you'll see why I think that's why this is leaking so my plan is to I didn't want to do this but my plan is to I have uh, this is two inch P, uh, ABS right here my plan is to cut here and then re weld in new pipe and I got a two inch the smallest coupler I could find and it, it might work I might be able to get this to work and then I'll weld in this new one here, which is Valterra. Valterra, everything will be Valterra then. Hopefully it will uh, bolt up and it won't leak. So let's see what we can do. I got the old valve or plumbing fitting cut out. Here is the, this is a new valve. I mean, it's a year old, but never really been used. And then here's the old fitting with the seal on there. And then here is the new fitting with hopefully a better sealing surface that accepts this seal better. So let's see how it goes. Here is the seal that goes in between the valve and this fitting here. 
I'm going to show you, here's the old fitting, and when you set the seal down, it literally, it literally just kind of is there. It doesn't, it goes down, but it's almost like the seal's a little too, bit too big. When I put it on this new Valterra brand one, the seal sits there, and then it, it actually has to kind of snap into place, and it pull, it, it, it's hard to explain it, but it's a snugger fit, essentially. So I'm gonna clean these up, and hopefully that's the problem of why it was leaking. Here is the new fittings, glued up, ready to go, and it never had poop in it. I mean, this thing, this has never seen poop since I've owned it. It was clean even when I got it. So we are gonna test out the system, all new from here to here, and it's very nice throw. Okay, this is a sight that most don't see. Get up right up in there. That's the underside of it. There you go. So we're gonna see if my Fernco fitting is sealing against all the other parts and pieces. And that's why I removed all that duct tape and stuff I had up in there so I can see if it's leaking. And uh, you know, we're gonna fill with water. Before, it was leaking right out of that valve instantly. So we're gonna see how it does. Jen had the, the water hose here. We filled the tank, pressurized the whole uh, water system with the water pump, filled the water heater tank, and now we got pressure. So we got cold water. There's a little bit of air in the system still. And then the hot water. So now what I gotta do is test the pooper. So just did all this work to it and we gotta flush the toilet to fill the entire, this valve's closed. So I gotta flush the toilet and fill the entire black tank. And um, well, really it'll start filling and it'll start leaking right away if there's gonna be a leak. Um, I'll see it. So I'm gonna have Jen in there flushing the toilet and I'm just gonna have my head sticking like this. And it's probably going to be the only time I ever do that because it's fresh water right now. It's a brand new toilet. See if that valve's on behind it. How do I make sure it's on? It's got to be in line. No, it's off, so you got to turn it on. There you go. Oh, it sounded like yep. water. And then let me know when you're ready. I mean, I'm ready. There's not a whole lot to this. Here we go. So I am down here looking into the valve to see if there's any water dripping. It used to drip right between that seal. And I'm not seeing anything dripping right now, so that's a good sign. And I'm gonna also check on the sides of the seal. But I'm gonna have her fill that tank and get a complete pressure. This isn't gonna be the most exciting thing on YouTube, I'll tell you that. No. See, that seal is there. <laughs> That's commitment right there. So I think what's well, never been used. This all brand new stuff. So now we gotta see if there's any water leaking through the valve, past the valve. I think it's dry as a bone. I mean, it is dry as a bone. Is this a thumbnail? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> maybe if I maybe if I pulled the lever and we got mid splash. Whoa. Hmm? We're just taking it for a test drive. I filled the... <laughs> Everybody's waving today. I two, two waves and thumbs up right there. You should've got that on camera. Yeah, so we're pulling into Walmart here and I filled the, the black water or the black 
tank is still filled with water as it was. All right, so I'll, I'll pick up the slack here. Yeah. We filled up the black tank with water. Correct. He added oh, some so red food dye to the black tank to yeah. kind of act as like, you know, a tell. If there's a leak, we'll know right where it's coming from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just to see how the sloshing action works on the camper when you drive it around. So we're hoping that it's all contained in the black tank, no red dye got anywhere. But time will tell. There's a couple connections that have never been tested with water in the black tank because the the gate valve or the, um, the guillotine style valve always leaked. So now that it's new and hasn't leaked yet since it's been installed, we got the tank full and we want to see if it's leaking because it's under pressure. Now you don't like them? What's the problem? Well, I bought these pillows. I don't know if I like them in here. What's wrong with them? I don't know. I just don't know that I like them. Should we take them right back? I mean, we will never take them back if we don't right now. Yeah, you know, I, I guess it's fine. They're well, just pillows. What do we get? The, uh, the... Should we get the, the bird ones? No, I don't think that would look good either. We could always do this. <laughs> Getting in the shade. What are you working on? I just mounted, what do you call these things? Porch light? Floodlight? Yeah. So it's an LED I bought a long time ago. And I just have a U-bolt up here. Uh, I didn't want to drill through this small aluminum ladder and weaken it. So I put a U-bolt that I had it was a little big, but it worked. And then this piece of aluminum angle, and I just drilled a couple holes, mounted it, and then Jen told me where to point it. So I think that we can adjust that. Yeah, we can adjust it. And I have the wiring here coming out of the camper, and I have the wiring for there, and I got these from the junkyard. I got these uh, waterproof plugs with some pigtails on them that uh, off of that old Lincoln that I got the horn from for the 78 Chevy. but. What are you working on? So these are the bug mud dauber things to keep bugs and wasps from going into different areas of the camper. So this is a custom one right here because they didn't make the size I needed. So I bought two of them that were a certain size and then cut them down and overlapped them and took copper wire I had in my scrap pile and twisted them together so that they'll just loop. So right now I'm working on making it so there's no sharp edges. So come on over, I'll show you some other uh, mud dauber screens I installed already. This one, this one is the first one that I did. And there's these little spring clips that they give you. Um, on the old, this is actually the old original water heater door, door for the Atwood. And uh, with the new water heater and as you can see, there's little springs and they just hold on there. Here's another one that I did. This is the battery uh, ventilation for all the gases to be vented out. We got the fresh stinky slinky here. We got a kit with two 10 footers. So we're gonna test out the dumping situation here in the septic tank at the house. I got the tank full of water with red dye in it just so that I could see it. And um, we're just gonna go try and dump it, see if it works. So I'm gonna try it with water before anything else. Hold on to that thing. Is that it? Yeah, you, you gotta hold on to it. So there's a leak. Figured it out. There's some pink water here in the shower. So, and I can tell that it's leaking out of the bottom of the toilet. This is the black tank. I'm assuming that the seal between the black tank and the toilet 
is not working. It's a brand new seal. I don't know why it's not working, but it's something that I'm gonna have to assess. So we cannot use the black tank. Uh, that's why we're testing it. So rather it be pink water than uh, poop and pee. I took the toilet off. There's two bolts, it's pretty quick. I took the toilet off and I wasn't even thinking there are two bolts that go right through the tank and I didn't even seal them at all. So I sealed those bolts and made sure that the gasket for the actual toilet seal looked good and it's really pretty much brand new. Put that all back together and I filled the black tank completely up like just below the guillotine valve inside the toilet I had water completely full and I parked it on a super steep hill for like an hour and it was completely dry it wasn't leaking from underneath the toilet and then I parked it on a hill on its side and same thing wasn't leaking but where it was leaking after about an hour was back here which is the vent pipe that goes all the way up into the through the ceiling out the roof and that union was put in there by the previous owner and that fitting that I didn't dive into yet, it's leaking at somewhere at this connection. It's most likely right here. I don't know yet. I gotta take it apart. Um, it did not leak when I tested it. If you watch some old videos, it didn't leak when I tested the tank without the toilet on it, but now with the toilet on it, it actually fills up a little bit higher and produces a little bit of head pressure. So I know that that tank is plumb full there and it's leaking out of there. So, so I got the toilet off and I assessed it, looked under there with a mirror and it looks like there's a welded on flange, I believe that goes through the tank. I don't know what's going on here and what this material is. It, I did notice that they use like some sort of white glue to glue the portions of this tank together and I'm thinking that's what this is. Um, I did notice they also used normal black ABS cement. But what I do know, some of it is, is that this pipe is ABS, it's black. This pipe said ABS on it, I sanded it off. But that, or this fitting, whatever this is, that's ABS. The yellow is ABS. I don't know what this white is. But I kind of changed plans and I sanded it the best I can. And I'm just going to go in there with ABS cement and just put a ton of coats on here. I know that's not the best way to do this, but you know what? That is welded and glued in there and it's on a corner with all these ridges. If I take this all apart and it's a big old hole that I can't fix, it's kind of like, then what? So. Here's the update on the repairs. I got two coats of ABS cement there all around and I'm gonna do another coat or two on the top and I'm also gonna reach underneath uh, and then coat the bottom. It's just, it just looks like there's just a flange welded in. I'm just gonna coat the bottom, might as well try it. And then while I'm at it, I got this crack, which I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this, but this was a repair that I attempted before that obviously failed. I'm gonna try and sand this down and, and at least throw a little bit of ABS cement on that. See if I can at least get it fixed slightly for the time being. Dremeled and sanded this crack. I'm gonna take a little popsicle stick and shove the uh, ABS cement underneath there. Do the coat underneath and this one. We have an update. After this was sanded, I used solvent, uh, ABS weld. Solvent welded that back. That's most likely not going to work because of that's how I fixed this last one But I'm just getting it so it's sealed up. I'm not going to walk in this I'm going to figure something else out, but I had the the solvent weld out might as well just seal that up now this is the vent that was leaking and putting on three coats of solvent weld because it was all ABS material then I found out when the uh, toilet bolts go through this plastic and, it, and uh, it's not a good design. It causes a lot of torque on this plastic. Because of the age, it's starting to crack a little bit. So I put butyl tape caulking uh, Proflex under there. It's leaking just a little, little bit. So I'm gonna put more Proflex. I just scuffed the area. I'm gonna put more Proflex all around it before I put the toilet back on. But underneath here, I actually put on butyl tape RV Proflex, and then I actually went through and put some ABS cement just because I was going crazy. And let's see if we can get a mirror shot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there. I already put alcohol on it. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, Eternabond, the white 
non-paintable Eternabond, I'm gonna cut little squares and cover it up from the inside. The sewage might eat away at this and it might fail, I have no idea, but if it fails, it's gonna fall down and go out the pooper, who cares, right? All right, I am filling the black tank. I got my blue food coloring in there. And we're gonna fill it up to the guillotine, drive it around, see if the vent leaks over there. And we're gonna see if it leaks out from underneath the toilet. Well, we're a few days out from our next camping trip. So we're taking a taking a little test drive because Jay did some some work on the truck and the camper. What'd you do on the truck? You fixed the U joint? Yep, two U joints in the rear drive shaft. We're also testing the black tank. It's filled with water with blue food coloring. So then we're also testing out the new video camera here that we got. Can't really see because it has such a glare on it. But we got glare for me. We got a backup camera and a front camera. And it's yep. like attached to the after testing, we have successfully, we've driven with it full up to the route here of water in the black tank and it sat for multiple days under, I'm not going to say under pressure, but with it full. I took toilet paper and I just wrapped it around the entire toilet and then also around the vent area so that the toilet paper would absorb the water right away and I would know there's a leak and there were no leaks. So that is a job well done. Next is to figure out the floor for the shower pan, but that's another project. So we're gonna wrap this one up. I know it's a long video, but stay tuned because the next video, we're gonna take this thing actually out camping for the first time this year. Stay tuned.